Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Life and Literature. My name's Emily, and today I'm going to be doing a semi-non-spoiler of One for Sorrow, The Magpie Society by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCulloch. If this is something you'd be interested in, then please give one watching. The screaming was coming from the sea. A figure was standing by the water. The sun had disappeared from the horizon, but there was enough, there was enough ambient light to see by. A body lay on the sand, waves lapping at the soles of her feet. She was on her front, but her head was tilted to one side. Her lips tinged an unnatural blue, pale skin, blue lips, tangled strands of hair, twisted limbs, and on her back, an elaborate tattoo of a magpie. So this book is all about a student called, this is all about a student called Lola, who sadly dies and it starts off by saying that in the back of the book so I'm not giving anything away but she dies and it's all about these two main characters who are trying to kind of find their way they're trying to find in the end the mystery of what is Lola what happened to her because it doesn't look like it was just an accidental death or suicide they believe it was murder so they investigate as well as investigating the premise of the magpie society now the book centers around ivy and audrey both of which are told by each author separately they form an unlikely alliance to try and find out what happened because Audrey Wagner is the new student at Illum I think it's called Illumin Hall. Um Illumin Hall and A Star Ivy Moore Yang. Illumin Hall is her home. So you have one American girl who comes to a English boarding school and you have the English A Star student who seems a bit infuriated with Audrey and her kind of her essence her being there is just a huge inconvenience from how they could describe it and she feels like she doesn't need a roommate she this was meant to be her year it was meant to be all these magical things and not only did her friend Lola die she also now has some new girl who she doesn't want to help she doesn't want to be her friend she just wants to get on with her own stuff now the whole reason I bought this book is because when I saw the Magpie Society one for sorrow I felt that was a amazing premise for a book that is that is that gives huge scope to multiple books because obviously as it's very I, I feel like it's more of an English thing I don't know if if people other other countries do if you do please put in the comments below because I definitely do whenever I see a magpie I'm majorly superstitious and I have to say good morning three times so if there's something you do when you see a magpie comment below but when I saw the magpie society and one for sorrow I knew straight away it was going to be a series it had to be this is too great an idea to not do as a series with that in mind I also felt like they were aiming for it to be a thriller so something of mystery something of suspense now I would say this is more of a young adult mystery it's much more geared towards a younger audience I'm 23 I'm not saying I didn't enjoy it but I feel like the type of books I've read which more scope on the what I'd call a thriller turn a lot darker this has probably the potential to do that but I feel like someone maybe of a younger age someone who is just diving into mystery no matter what age 
I think this is the perfect book for you to kind of dip your toe in, get used to the kind of build up to the clues, the hints and the character development. I do think pro-wise the different writing styles, the the concept of um, the author Zoe and Amy doing two different, like doing the character each and it going back and forth. There were some similarities where it blended quite nicely but also when it didn't I felt it was very helpful to differentiate the, the the authors and the characters because I feel like when an author by themselves does two points of view it still feels like you're being told by one person whereas when it's two different people they have different ways they'll view things they'll have different expressions i do feel like this book did that quite well of two different characters from two different viewpoints similar situations were happening but being told differently made you feel like they were two different people two different characters you're reading about i also think the variety in people and their background was was really really nice it was nice to see such a difference because you have audrey who's american she comes not so much about her personality being lavish but she does come from a very kind of lavish lifestyle you do at some points see that you see her kind of reference it and not think about the fact that not everyone may be able to get the same opportunities um, there's an instance where her phone gets taken and her first thought is just to email her dad and get a new one and I feel like unless unless you have a bit of money in the bank not saying it's not anyone can just get another phone I'm like the kind of references they go to her house and she has a huge room a huge like walk-in wardrobe it's explained very lavish and i think that is really nice to see then the contrast of ivy who explains that she has to she has to do well because she is there i think she's there on scholarship um i might be wrong about that but she hasn't got the full opportunity that audrey does so she fights to constantly be the best student because she needs the best record to be able to go anywhere um educational wise and also she wants to stay there she sees it as her home because compared to when she compares it to her actual home um which is it sounds like it's a flat she doesn't feel it doesn't ever feel warm or welcoming when she talks about her actual home she definitely feels like a lumen hall is more her home and she feels more safe there in the space that is there now their difference in characters is very interesting it does create a very intriguing dynamic between them both um because they do form an alliance to try and find out what is going on but i feel like the pacing of the events of how they become friends i didn't personally like only because as i said where i've read a lot of thrillers i avidly look out for little clues little hints if if you want to read the book i think you should if you don't want to hear any spoilers i would stop now because there are some things i'm going to touch on now which are spoilers because the the greatness of this book is it is very interesting i do like the dynamic of some of the characters i like the possibility of this series and i'm hoping and from what i hear it is going to be a series so i'm hoping the way they've kind of structured things is because there's more to come but if you don't want to hear any spoilers then finish this video now hit the like button and then come back to this once you have read the book because i do think pe people should read this book i do think it is a good read however some parts were a little predictable 
Now, I'm not saying so much that is a complete bad thing. However, I like a little bit more of a build-up. Now, I feel like because I can't just go and read the next book, that's why I don't like that it's just jumped straight to knowing things. It could be that we needed to know that way prior because it, it may deflect from someone being a bit more suspicious than they are um, because it said it so early on. But, for instance, Theodore, who um, Audrey comes in contact with, he seems very sweet, very charming. You can tell that she kind of fancies him and she does have his number and they do start texting. But then it's also referenced that Ivy has a boy that she had a somewhat intimate relationship with over the break um, called Teddy. Now, everybody pretty much knows Teddy is short for Theodore. Um, I think as soon as I started hearing Audrey's kind of take on this Theodore, it was evident. They hadn't said Teddy's name yet um, in Ivy, and I felt like straight away I was like, they're going to be the same person. I was like, it's, it's just, it's going to be a typical like you're talking to the same boy I had like I don't know how I feel about that oh I kind of like him it's gonna have something it didn't go that way which I am so glad it didn't but it straight away kind of made me feel a bit unsure because I was like if there's something so easy I feel like it should have been a different pet name um because then I would have probably second guessed myself and then when it was finally revealed they are the same person, I'd been like, oh yeah, I knew that all along, like, but kind of hit myself on the back that I didn't. <laughs> Whereas Theodore and Teddy, I knew straight away. Now, I'm not saying that's anything against them hinting clues. There are definitely more clues that I've picked up on, which I don't know where they're going to lead to. But I felt with something like that, I already am unsure about Teddy. <laughs> I don't fully trust him. I think there must be something else he knows there must be some other part he plays. I think all characters know something and even if they haven't directly had anything to do with the mystery part, they've definitely had something to either the build up or the after. So Teddy I already don't trust, but I do feel like the pacing of that to for them to find out it's the same person and then instead of them arguing, which I guess is a really good girl power moment, instead of arguing, they came to a funny prank and then that's how they bonded but the bonding felt very quick I feel like there could have been one or two more scenes with them kind of each helping each other out even if it's subtle because it felt like almost they hated like definitely Ivy Ivy really didn't like Audrey and definitely didn't trust her because she because at one point she does actually s try and say that Audrey's has something to do with the murder. And I think that is a huge accusation to have against someone. You must not like them to some degree to then have that. And then literally a few scenes later, she's like friends with her. I just think it was too... Like they're not huge friends. They're not best friends. But they're too friendly that I think, I know girls, <laughs> and a lot of girls do, but when I was at school, and this is where it's set, at the school years, I know you could be enemies with one some, someone one day and best friends the next, but I do feel like girls are very, or some girls can be very catty and bitchy, and I just feel like it didn't feel believable to me that you could be friends one moment and actually accuse murder of the other one the next um yeah i did i didn't really i didn't gravitate to that too much i'm sure their relationship is probably going to develop and there it may have been a case where the authors didn't know maybe if the second book was a hundred percent so just kind of wanted to get them being friends as soon as possible um but i feel like they had such a frosty start I don't know, I feel like a younger audience would devour it because they would want to have that. 
um, with any friends. I'm a lot more sceptical of people so I couldn't be friends with someone that's just accused me of murder. I think that's where your own personality comes into it when you're reading and I love that, that there's that scope but I think personally I feel like they could have they could have dragged it out a little bit more. They could have had more scenes of them bonding. Um, I do think, um, prediction-wise, that there's going to be some characters that come back into play. I don't think all is as it seems for some of the people you think are completely safe out of being involved. I, If you have read this book, I would love to know because I've been trying to search for people's um, reviews and what they think but personally I feel like Ivy even though she seems always comes across more of the kind of smart intelligent um, one in certain of these circumstances only because she knows the school so well she knows the people so she kind of leads some of the conversation with things so Audrey kind of just goes along in some instances I think Ivy led too much with her heart and I'm not saying that's a bad thing in characters but when a teacher has been somewhat involved um, so if you know that part of the story then I'm not going to go any further but when you know a teacher has somewhat had some knowledge of some information and kept it to themselves and instead of doing anything with that information trying to get anything more out of the teacher just let them go like no <laughs> no because I don't believe him fully he's a character that kind of has subtly been in the background and then suddenly you're made to feel like oh yeah he's completely innocent he's done nothing wrong and he's gone like he's disappeared now he's no longer involved and it's just no no so I don't trust the teacher I don't think Ivy was smart in doing that I think she could have gone about that a different way I feel like again that could have been pushed more into a second book so you increasingly get more and more suspicious of him but there's no um, ramification of it yet there's no justice just yet because then you want to get to the next book and you want to know all these little things are they going to be dealt with how are they going to be dealt with so I feel like that concluded too quickly the brother I don't trust <laughs> I really don't I think genuinely he is mourning for his sister but he paid Clover and Clover we do find out is the person that's been doing the um, the podcast so throughout the book there is a podcast um, transcript that people in the, the story are listening to and it's kind of delving into what happened to Lola and that's what doubts people in the fact that she did commit suicide it makes everyone believe that she was killed for a podcast it is very smart because you want people to listen to your next episode you want people to know what's going on and I feel yeah I feel like again that happened her being discovered it, it was Clover who was Ivy's friend I think that was too soon but then it did leave on a cliffhanger um, of where is Clover what's happened to her she was delved into the concept um, of there actually being a magpie society um, at the school or maybe outside of the school that keeps the school and its information safe but I don't know with that I feel like it it was a very good cliffhanger it's very smart but I feel like again they could have dragged it out a bit so they just find out it's Clover they run to her to get her to tell us tell them more information because she believed she knew who did it and then they find out she's been taken because even if Clover was wrong in her prediction of who it was that could have been that could have been a side note later on once they find her or hopefully find her I really hope there's not another death because I will have to reread the entire first book because I still have no idea who this magpie society is I don't know who could be involved or who's lying 
I do think some of the characters, as I said, know more than they're giving on. Which for we a mystery, you need. And I think for writing, is very smart. The authors have been very smart with that. Um, so I feel like overall it is a good book i think if you are a young reader or if you are just getting into mystery then i feel like this is a very very good book to start off with or to kind of add to a collection i absolutely love the cover i love when a hard book actually takes the time and effort to do something on the actual book itself and they've put a feather which is like holographic and i love that a purple feather and I'm interested to see if they do the exact same for the second book I think it would be quite cool if maybe they've done maybe two feathers for two for um, Joy I wonder if this book was tried to make feel more like Sorrow because of the name so a lot of dramatic things happen um, there is a lot of pain and suffering and maybe the second book Maybe they'll hint to some joyful moments. Maybe that's why they wanted the two characters to be friends already before the second book. I do genuinely think that the writing, the characters, um, the variety in people, their backgrounds, the intrigue that it does have, I think it is great. I think it is a great foundation for the book to go on to a series. I just wish certain things, <laughs> as most readers do, I think there's very rare opportunity you ever get a book that you fully love um, 100% and I feel like, especially with mysteries, there are so many different ways to take it and I just think there was some big scenes that could have been big, um, like the cave scene. Um, there was a cave they found with a sleeping bag it was a massive dramatic lead up to it for then nothing and I just think in real life you wouldn't do that I try and look at it as if I was in that situation if I found a cave and a sleeping bag um, when I thought I was going to find the secret society I would definitely have more questions than just going back and preparing for like an end of year prom thing where they get dressed up like I don't know I feel again it's the pacing of the events for me I feel if the they are going to do more books that maybe there's too many big scenes that they've got that they are trying to kind of lull you into a sense of security because you're already prepared to have some scenes re-explained maybe like the cave scene because they're gonna have to touch on that again i feel massive intrigue i want to read the next book which is what you want when you've got a book especially if you're making it a series you want the reader to want to know what's going on and i have so many questions there's so many things that haven't been answered um i feel for a mystery book for both of them i know um amy mcculloch has done quite a few books and I know um, Zoe has focused and done quite a few young adult books as well as I think she done a home a home book. I just wanted more. I felt like there was so many opportunities for more that a book allows you to slowly go into mystery and slowly develop characters and relationships that's why i love books so much over tv and film because more with t more with tv shows they can but then sometimes it loses its essence because they're trying to drag it out too much whereas films have to go straight into quickly explaining the story so they can develop the characters quicker and books especially series you have so much time you have so many ways you can have these filler scenes of bonding and creating development in the characters especially with thrillers that is needed there was times i was really gutted um, when they just explained what happened they explained who teddy was um 
they explained obviously that Clover was the person doing the podcasts. I didn't like the references to social media. I know they had phones and that had to make it understandable for the podcast element. I didn't like the references to social media and TikTok. I felt it set it very much in modern day. Um, I guess they want that for more relevance and for a younger audience. That's great. They'll love the references to TikTok. But of an older reader, I say older, I'm only 23, but from a long time reader, um, I prefer, especially if you're trying to go into a mystery thriller, I prefer the time, the years, isn't directly referenced only because then you never feel fully secure you never fully understand where you are and already the author's lying to you so you already feel distrustful of everyone and that's what you need if you need to not trust some of the characters you're looking out for where they're going to screw up and when you put it much in this day and age especially in some other books where it's referenced about social media, maybe MySpace, <laughs> that I'm sure that there has been, then it sets it away from younger audiences years to come. You want a book that you could pick up 20 years from now and read again, but in 20 years from now, I'm probably going to forget what TikTok was, as people 10, 20 years younger than me will do they won't know what tiktok was because they weren't around when it came out and it's going to feel very much like myspace or like bbm or um msn god i used to spend hours on msn <laughs> but uh, i understand that reference but my sister who's 16 if i said in a book and referenced about msn it would go straight over her head and you don't want that of a reader because you want them to be intrigued and you want them to be understanding. Sometimes it's hard when a it, place is set, when it's a place that people don't know, but then you describe it. So I feel like that was a bit of an error in putting. I feel going forward, they can do whatever they want. They're writers. They can write the story. They can tell it whatever way they want to. But personally if i'm reading a thriller um or a mystery i just think there's no need to include things very set in this time because especially with series you want them to gone back to you want people to pick them up years and years from now and if you set it too much in a time period when it's referenced to things like social media that is forever changing you lose a bit of that audience because it's I think TikTok is referenced really early on but straight away I was a bit oh I was a bit gutted I don't want to be gutted when I'm reading a few pages in now I'm sure younger audiences will love them references so that's why I say I definitely think this is a young adult mystery I definitely think if I gave this book to my sister I think she would probably actually devour it and be really interested and I'm not saying I wasn't, I'm just saying there's just so much potential, which it does make me excited for the next book. I am going to wait and I'm going to get that book as soon as it's available. I'm going to try and pre-order it if I can and that will go straight on my shelf. I'm really hoping it's as aesthetic as this because I love series that actually go together, especially on the spine. So I feel like if they can try and keep this kind of aesthetic for all of them maybe reverse would be cool maybe if they done a purple cover with like white writing or something would be really cool i just feel it's it's a great i think it's a great collection it's a great idea i think it's very smart it is very witty and it's, it's very friendly it's very interesting and i I am excited for the second book I really I will buy that second book whether there's points I didn't like or not it doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to keep reading these series um everyone has things every book sometimes has flaws and there's different things not everyone's gonna love 
but that doesn't mean you just don't buy it i think i think if you love the premise if you like the characters then every book deserves a chance and if you are looking for a mystery or a new potential series to keep waiting for then i feel like you should get this book the magpie society is definitely an interesting read and i did find myself dotting things down thinking at the beginning oh i think that's going to be interesting i'm going to put a little note here as soon as theodore's mentioned i was like i put a little note in my phone i was like is this going to be teddy is this going to be the same character same with the brother i didn't trust the brother i was like something's going to happen with the brother he's going to know something he's going to have some other involvement with something to do with the story and he was so I do like that element. I do like writing little notes. I think, oh, is this going to be important? And there's still notes in my phone which haven't come up. So I will go back to it after the second book and see if there's any other little things I picked up on. And if there wasn't, I'm going to be really annoyed with myself. So if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. One for Sorrow, the Magpie Society. I hope you enjoyed the review. If there's any more you'd like me to review or if there's any other comments you think about the book, please do comment below. I do love to see other people's opinions and I hope to see you soon. Bye.